YouTube. We're gonna open this box right now. It's gonna be amazing. We're excited for this. It's something new, something exciting, and something that we can't wait to get out of the box. Now, if Mother Nature would just calm down and stop blowing so hard, it'd be great. I'm kidding. We've had quite the uh, windy forecast, let's just say, and it's made it kind of strangely difficult to film these airplanes. Oh yeah, it's the Futura 64 millimeter, all new from FMS. Amazing, so we're gonna open this thing up and see how amazing this, what the heck? Can you read that for me? Futura Sport Jet? No, that. Licensed by Tomahawk Aviation. Okay, good, good, good. So this thing is going to be amazing. I can't wait to get into it and see how it works. I've got some concerns, but I think they're going to be esquanged by the amazing performance of this Futura. Futura, of course, has been super fun. We've done the Futuras in the past and had a really, really good experience with them. And sometimes we have great experiences. Other times people crash our Futuras. Just in case, if you know yep. who you are, you know who you are. <laughs> I've never crashed one myself, actually, because I really like the Futura. But we did, we did have. Well, uh, he didn't not like the Futura. No, he liked it. He just he liked just... it so much that he ran it into the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, this was not me. And no, you don't get to see a video of it because we weren't filming at the time. But that's all right. We'll just leave that for you guys to wonder about. You can ask in the comments below if you want to know the whole story. See if somebody fessed up. Unfolded manual. And it's even a small box. It's gigantic too. And by the way, I must say this box is small. Yeah. And this is a smaller plane. Just keep in mind, the other Futura is 80. Okay. That we've done yeah. of recent history. And it is an amazing plane and you will really like it. So if you don't like this, if this isn't your cup of tea, if you see features missing that you'd like to see, just remember the 80 is amazing. Okay, first of all, first thing I notice about this is A, awesome color scheme. It's definitely not the green one, this mm -hmm. is yellow. There's three colors that I know about. There's a red, oh, in fact, I should point that out real quick. There's a red, a green, and a yellow, Yep. okay? So we have the yellow one, yellow is good. We've got the same shape of the wing and a huge decal that covers up all this stuff on the bottom, I love it. Yeah. Quick release. Fixed landing gear. Now, I know some of you guys are cringing, thinking, ah, fixed landing gear on a jet. Yeah, I know. Well, the thing is, when they get smaller like this, oh, we don't have to put the ball links on. Awesome. Okay. Got a little bit of glue penetration here. These balls. Don't these pull them off. They're why? painted. I'm just going to pick off the balls, and then you'll never know any better. Yeah, do you think anybody's gonna see that other I than the will. fact that we put it on camera? I will see that every time. And by the way, I gotta say, I like these decals. These decals are sweet. Mm -hmm. They cover up a lot of these little bumps, okay? So sweet, good, well, let's talk about rigidity. Yeah, it feels pretty dang rigid for an EPO plane. I believe this is EPO. And it is good rigidity on the wings, rock solid, but still very light, which is nice. Ooh, oh, damage. What the heck happened the there? The clippy, the clippy do. The what? On the canopy. The no way. I'm pretty sure. This is sitting on top of that and they don't have any protection for that. Every single one of you is gonna have that. No. Wait, is that how it was in there? Was it in there like that? Hold on, where was the wing? Was it over here? You took that one out first. That I don't was know. this one. Oh, that, yeah, that clip. sucks. That's a pretty big damage That's a spot. big dent. Okay, so that sucks, but what are you gonna do? Hopefully it's not on every single one that comes out. Carbon fiber wing joiner. I'm just gonna note something real quick before we get any further. Very low piece count. Mm -hmm. I like it. Very. Okay, now I've been noticing this clip-in nose style rather than magnetic attachment points. Not sure how I feel about that yet, but I can tell you this, I haven't dropped one of them yet. That's true. So <laughs> magnetic attachment points sometimes leave you dropping things. I do really like this finish. It's a dark finish, yeah. should pop in the sky. Although this color, you know, if you go with a gray, okay, like this F-15 over here, also from FMS, beautiful plane, or this F-18, you know they've got the realistic grays. Um, the realistic meaning Navy, Air Force liveries from all across the globe are gonna tend to use that color. And you wanna know why? Because they disappear in the sky. Okay, yeah. this darker color is gonna be less likely, unless of course you're flying in a thunderstorm. 
Okay. So not usually we, recommended, we but do we've that done it. Sometimes. We do it sometimes. That's right. Oh, don't miss this pocket. There's landing gear in it. Oh, There's a pocket in here with landing gear. Uh, ooh, beautiful. So they have spring loaded. Hard, rock hard though. But these are for, fixed, for fixed gear. gear. That's very unusual. Yeah. Uh, so excited. I did see that in some of the promotional videos that we watched. Yes, we watch them too. So as you can see, we've got a singular nut and bolt sack. That's always handy. Dropped it. And there's more in here. Okay, just got the other one. Very easy time changing these out. Ooh, except, yeah. So it's got a machined, how the heck? It's got a machine stud with a set screw. See the set screw here, machine stud with a milled tip. So if you're gonna put some squishies on there, should be relatively easy as long as you're within the thickness dimension. There's still more stuff There's in a there? nose gear. It's just way down there. Okay, sweet. Also spring loaded. I, I can't appreciate a simple, a simple mechanism. And I do like that this is a simple mechanism. It seems like it's gonna work well. I have no complaints about simple and well-machined parts. Although I can say those tight tolerances are gonna bind if you have a bad landing. So just don't have a bad landing and you'll be fine. <laughs> just saying, Scott. <laughs> You're supposed to let him fess up. I didn't, nobody knows who Scott is. Scott has to fess up himself. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of Scots in this world. Okay, so I took the canopy off just to tempt you guys. Oh yeah, beautiful. Wow. Amazing. Boy, I must say this thing is light. It's, it's light, it looks beautiful. It's a good size. I know it's really, you know, it's funny because some people are going to complain about the 64 millimeters, but look how beautiful that is. First of all, we don't have the ugly five blade design like before. It looks like an 11 or 12 blade design. And I can never tell. I never count the blades. I That's just go by what the that. box says. Yeah. Snap that sucker on there. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's going to slip off super easy. And so it's kind of the double edged sword because if it doesn't slip off too easy, then it's not going to protect you. But man, that thing looks gorgeous. And we do not currently have our future up here, but I just love the way this body looks. Very smooth. Feel it. Yeah. Look at the lack of bumps. Yeah, it is. These bumps are I smaller the than silver. what they normally are. I love the silver. It looks really dang nice. And I love yellow, actually. Yellow is one of my favorite colors for airplanes. Yeah. And so honestly, it's, it's just a highlight, I realize. But I gotta say, really happy with the way the future has come out of the box. There is a quality label down inside of that hole, okay? okay. So it doesn't really mean anything to you guys on the other end of the camera, but just wanted to make sure you were aware that there was a little quality emblem in there. So obviously, are, what now? Because I said I like the size and you said people are going to want. I, people will complain about a smaller size because, you know, they're like, I want an 80. I want a this. I want a that. Well, well here's the thing. You got to have that entry level option. Yep. And so we love the fact that we have an entry level option that's going to be a reasonable price point for a lot of people that maybe can't afford to get into an 80. And the other thing too is, let's think about this. Just grab my screws here as we come by. Let's look at the box. We usually kind of look at the box. The box is gonna tell the tale. Okay, what do we have for, the power system is an 2840, 3150 KV brushless motor. It's on a 40 amp ESC. Six blade, it's 11, uh, excuse me, 64 millimeter, 11 bladed fan. Mm -hmm. And what does it use for a battery? 4S 2200 through 2600. Oh, okay, nice. so that answers the next question. That's what I was just getting ready to say is if you go up to eight, the 80 millimeter EDF, you're gonna be running a six, six S power system. So that adds a lot of cost and some people don't have that kind of cash lying around. So let's see what we got. Okay, 2200, let's do this one, 2200. 30C, let's go ahead and pop this one in here, get it charging, that's a Gen 2, and then let's go to 3200 might be too big. And, and we want 4S, right? Mm -hmm. 3200 4S, that one looks like it's a little worse for wear. I think I'm gonna just go with 22, oh, here's a 50C, but it's had, it's had a little bit of life to it. So let's go ahead and plop this one in here and get that charging too. So basically when you're looking at your battery pack, 2200 4S is such a common size that I like to use that in the models that we're reviewing because it just, I feel like it's almost disingenuous if you use a weird size. I don't generally use 2600 4S, 
but you can technically do that if you want. Okay, so and I like that it's actually a 4S call out instead of being like 3S, like anybody's actually gonna do that. We've had that a few times from FMS. Okay, this build is gonna be simple, guys. Look at the piece count, including the nut and bolt sack. Yeah. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 pieces, 12 if you include the manual. That is phenomenal. I could build that. Everybody, everybody knows you could build that camera crew. <laughs> because you've, you've worked with me to build so many others. All right, so let's go ahead and hook these things up right now. This is gonna be like the easiest install ever. The tail, we have elevators that have to plug in to a Y cable. I got these screwdrivers and really we only need one. Are all the screws the same hmm. size? Yeah, they are. They're all the same length. I like it, yeah. Okay, let's dump them out just to be sure about that. Oh, I ripped my sack. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yep, it's all right. I just spilled it all over the table. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in the elevator servos first. This is probably gonna be the hardest part of the build because I only have so many hands. Ooh, we've got some weird painty stuff here. Okay, throwing that away. Now, if you guys don't know how to fix this sort of thing, I'm kind of tempted to show them how to fix it. Because <sighs> like you could just put a piece of clear tape over that and you'd never ever know any better in terms of the flight performance. But it's like, that is a pretty big gouge. The problem is the color. I know, silver That's is so silver. hard to match. Do you have silver nail polish? I was just thinking about that. Because if you had silver nail polish, now these elevators should move the same direction. So I'm sorry, we're kind of trying to keep it so you can see. So the brown goes toward the camera crew in this case. And this is where you want to make sure that you get them plugged in right, because if they aren't plugged in right, it's going to be covered up and it's going to have to be totally disassembled to get back to it. The brown is toward the camera crew again. Okay, so if you plug these suckers in, better make sure you're getting good purchase and you've got them in there properly. Okay, so we're in properly. Now this one, I'm gonna actually pull, nah, I'm gonna leave it. I don't know where that, is that supposed to pocket in? I think it's supposed to go up to the front here. Is it? Well, they got it taped down. Oh, they taped it down, but then you can just pull the tape. I'm actually gonna push the tape back. Nah, I'm gonna take the tape out. I was, well, never mind. I don't care anymore. I lost interest in doing it that way. Let's push all this crap back so we can make a little bit more room. Okay, so look what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna pop the canopy and then I'm gonna take my elevator lead, which is right here, and I'm gonna carefully pull the excess in. And that is how you're gonna do that. Make it super easy on yourself. Okay, and then as I pull that, very easy, a lot easier than the F-18 we just did. The <laughs> F-18 is over my shoulder, which by the way is absolutely fantastic. We haven't flown it yet, but we did a super complicated, really long build because we know you guys hate short videos from Brian Phillips <laughs> RC and you punish us every time we do it. So we're gonna make them extra short for you on that one. Um, all right, so this is the uh, safety warning. If you stick anything in there and you get it cut off, you get the award for having equipment to do such things um because that's how the heck are you going to do that it's a ways up there that's a ways up there so let's slide this into position and we're trying to kind of avoid crushing right here so i'm just kind of pushing as we go a little bit at a time yeah I okay i think you're pinching a cable towards you a little bit one of those elevator you know what it kind of goes around a groove like that i wonder if i'm supposed to oh that's what happened oh guys it slipped out a little groove there, there so go. that's what you were seeing Okay, I've got that now fixed. And I'm just gonna very gently, carefully pull that. Yep, good catch on go. that. That made it a lot easier. All right, so now my elevator link, or elevator line is very long. We have tons of excess. Okay. All right, so now we wanna get the rudder installed after we put in these two screws, or actually you can put the screws in before or after, it doesn't really matter. And this label is going to be potentially a problem. So we'll wait and see. Now that's of course not going to be not going to be seen down there, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so brown is down. Guys, I always say that out loud verbally just because I want you guys to see what I'm talking about. There's a brown cable. I want to make sure it goes to the brown cable. Um, pretty pretty simple basic stuff. If you've built any radio controlled airplanes, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm just doing a little preliminary cable management. Okay, pulled it in, pulled it in, pulled it in, pulled it in. And uh, here we go. So now we're 
where we need to be. What am I catching? Am I catching anything? No, I just don't think it's quite seated yet. Not that I can see on this side. Just have to squish the foam. Okay, so we're in where it needs to be. Awesome. Now, also, I just noticed something as I was pulling this wire through. Look at this, guys. Oh, yeah. What's the yellow wire mean, camera crew? Thrust reverse. Yes, we can reverse the thrust. We can go forward and then backward, and then forward and then backward until we finish the job. It's gonna be amazing. Can't wait. Uh, also equipped with an XT60. Looks like the light duty Chinese style. We've seen some heavier duty um, sort of updated versions. They're actually quite a bit harder to plug in with the IC3 connectors of which we have a ton of. Uh, also EC3 connectors can be forced into those as long as it's the device end, meaning the plane end. You can plug an IC3 or an EC3 into an XT60, but just be wary if you have any concerns about the purchase when you get it in there, if it's loose, pull it out and make sure your pedals are adjusted out with a Phillips tip. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm gonna show you really quick. If you take an XT60 and you're looking at it, this is a battery. The battery usually has sockets on the battery end, meaning that this is technically a female connector. And then the receiver portion, this is what I'm talking about, the pedals can be expanded back out by taking a Phillips screwdriver. You're not looking too close, are you? <laughs> you can open those up so you get a better purchase on your plug. So in case you've never seen that before, now you've seen it now and you've got no excuse. So that being said, let's keep going with our build. We got to get some screws in here. Where did we dump all the screws? I slid them over here because I was going to say they were over here. You pushed the plane that way. Okay, so we're going to grab probably a two millimeter drive. Two millimeter drive is what we need for all of these. Yep, very good. So we're just going to get in there. Now I noticed that this, this is a little bit tricky once your vertical stabilizer is installed. So I would suggest for you guys watching at home, go ahead and run these screws in first if you can because otherwise it's a little harder to get those screw threads to mesh. So you can hear the popping and hissing. That's because I didn't have my stuff mesh. Now I'm watching right here. As it gets tight, it bottoms out. Okay, good. The camera crew is gonna leave that pile there so I don't freak out again. So now this time, since I've already got this started, you'll notice I'm not even using a plane stand here, folks. When we have installs back in the day, it seems like some of the older models that we do, they turn into such complicated builds because we try to squeeze every last little bit of value out of the receiver and the electronic setup. And that's partly what we do here on this channel. But truth is you don't have to go to such great lengths to set up flap rons and crazy, you know, mixes and all that stuff. You can just set up a plane with a regular six channel receiver. In most cases, you're going to be able to do almost all the features you want. And with inboard flaps, which you may have noticed this does have inboard flaps, you're gonna have really good flight performance. You're gonna be able to slow down for nice landings and the thrust reverse is gonna put it over the top because thrust reverse makes a big difference on planes that like to carry out on landing. Now, that being said, I'm still not sure how I feel about the fixed landing gear on a jet, but the truth is, if you're gonna belly land this sucker, thrust reverse becomes sort of a moot point in my opinion because I've never had a belly lander that really takes a lot of room to belly land. Mm -mm. Also, I think there's a post that sticks out of the nose on this plane. Okay, so nice and bottomed out, no problems. Let's talk about that for a sec. There is a post that sticks out, yep. okay? So that can be a double-edged sword. I'm not a big fan of posts that stick out during belly landing because it can catch stuff. And what you can do is, look at this, guys. If you know you're gonna be belly landing, you can actually press that all the way out if you want, okay? That can be taken out if you decide to do it but you have to kind of work at it. You're gonna to have to undo one screw and then lift that whole control linkage off, okay? I'm not suggesting you do it. I'm just saying if you know for sure you're gonna be doing belly landings all the time, you might save a little bit of effort in that way. Now also, I wanna point out one other big factor that I just noticed. There is no reflex to speak of in this plane, mm -hmm. okay? So if you don't have a reflex, what does that mean you have to do? If you want stabilizer, you're gonna to have to do like say a 630, or 631. Now, let's talk about channels for a quick sec before we get our wings on. We have the option to do all sorts of wing types, but in this case, the Futura has been fantastic with a standard wing type. I don't have any interest in doing flaperons. 
If you decide to do that, or if you wanna make it more aerobatic and do a full length aileron, you could Y cable your flaps, but just keep in mind that this is hinged from the bottom and not the center, okay? So you're not gonna get full deflection up no matter what you do, okay? So you're gonna have to get real creative if you do that. I don't suggest or think you need to do that at all. I would just fly this as a standard wing type with an inboard flap because they are really good on the Futuras. So that being said, again, everybody has their own opinions on how they wanna handle stuff like that. So I'm just gonna pull these two out gently so I don't lose them. This one says flap, this one doesn't say anything. Brown is toward the front. So the flap one is the down one and brown needs to go toward the front. So I'm just gonna hold these together. This is already gonna be a compact size plane when you're all said and done. So assembly is gonna allow for, um, you know, it's not like this is gonna be a hard one to take apart, but I would not plan on taking it apart myself. If I'm going to a flight field and I have to track this, if I have to put it in my truck or car and transport it, I'm still gonna be liable to just go ahead and leave it fully assembled. Mm -hmm. Make it fit. But truth is, if you have to disassemble it because you're shipping it somewhere or whatever, then you know this one would probably be a relatively easy one to take apart. Okay, so we're just gonna get this stuffed in. Okay, all cool. right, so that's in. Just remind me, we gotta actually put the screws, the screws in. Okay, I'm gonna get the wires on the other side. Do you wanna talk about doing that? Let's, let's just show people what, what we do to fix these things. What? We'll pause and come right back with some touch-up stuff. All right, so as you know, we do lots of unbox build radio setups. But we also do a lot of repairs on this channel. This stuff is just regular run of the mill spackle. There's nothing special about it, but we have links to stuff like this. If you wanna buy it from our links, you'll help support us. There's nothing special about this particular brand. We just happen to have links in case you do wanna support us, okay? So this irritates me, but it is what it is. So we're gonna fix it right now. All right, so this spackle, super easy. Just get a little bit, put it on your putty knife, okay? and rub it over the top of the damaged spot, okay? I didn't even have the opportunity to screw this up myself, but that's fine. Such is life in the big city, all right? So we've got that in there. We're just gonna scrape this across and then go over it a couple of times, pressing it into the damaged spot, okay? Now, you don't have to let it dry, but you can. And I prefer, because I'm way too impatient, I prefer to just clean it up while it's wet and then get it as perfect as possible. And then you can let it dry. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you some different color matches. Okay, so this stuff just cleans up with water. As you can see, it's super, super easy. And you're probably thinking to yourself, but you left all that schmutz on there. Yes, I did, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and wipe off the excess because the excess will wipe right off of this finished surface. There was two little nicks, okay? So once you get that, you can just wash this off your hands with warm water and it'll come right off, no problem, okay? And then if you really wanna get it perfect, my suggestion is let it dry completely and then wet a rag and you can slide the rag across it, okay? So as you can see, I haven't allowed it to set up, so it's gonna be a little bit too soft to really do that full function of swiping, okay? But as you can see, even without it being fully set up, you can get that thing darn near perfect, okay? And yes, this can be done after a crash. It doesn't have to be just some random shipping damage. But the truth is, you're not gonna have that void there now, but you are still gonna have a color match issue, okay? So I wanted to get that done as soon as possible so it could start drying, okay? And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of going around it and just kind of hitting, hitting the high points and getting out that excess, okay? Now I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes. We're not gonna mess with it. And you can see it's got a perfect profile to it. It's gonna be no problem at all. We're just gonna let that dry as we continue our build, okay? So our next move is to come back in here. In fact, I wonder if we should do the shelf liner trick right now too. Let's do shelf liner. Shelf liner is how we keep our batteries from slipping. I don't like Velcro. If you wanna use Velcro, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with Velcro. It works great. And this isn't even Velcro, it's hook and loop. Velcro is a brand name. Sorry, Velcro, 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 okay? <laughs> All right, you're welcome, Velcro. So this is some Chinese variation offering. Doesn't really matter. 
And the point is, at the end of the day, it hooks and loops. So all I do is I take this stuff, and by the way, this stuff works really nice for mounting receivers if you'd rather do that than actually mount on a piece of double-sided tape because then you can rip out the receiver. And then there's a little bit of a vibration isolation when you use a Velcro or hook and loop solution, okay? So basically this just stops your battery from slipping, but I don't like to have that residue on my batteries uh, from having Velcro where it used to be, okay? Now, the other thing is when you get a really hot pack, sometimes the adhesive will still squish through onto your battery for the first few times. And since we are always flying new batteries or new planes, we do tend to get a little bit more bleed through of that adhesive than you might. Okay, but just to give you an idea, I think a roll of this stuff costs like maybe 10 bucks. Yeah. You'll lose it, I mean, you use it for like hundreds and hundreds of planes. Yeah, and we have links for that too. If you look at the supplies, find yeah. the link for supplies, all that stuff is there. Yeah, it's there. We just try to make it easy for you to find it because a lot of times it's like, you know, it doesn't really produce much income for us, but it's just more a matter of trying to help you guys yeah. find stuff. People ask questions, so just- All the time. Point you there. Okay, so just as this dries, you can see it's maybe not as perfect as you could get it, but as you can see, just given our timeline for this build, it's been a very short build, which comes on the heels of that F-18 back there, which is absolutely gorgeous, and that thing took forever. It's like a multi-hour build, but we did a lot, of, a lot of creative stuff on that. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a nice finish on that now, and that damage point will basically just need to sit. Now, if you really wanna get it perfect, you'll let it dry, you'll hit it with one more coat, and then you're gonna have a near perfect finish. The other thing you can do is you can actually take some clear tape and just put it over the top of the damage point. And that's gonna basically hide the damage or at least the potential for airflow damage or the airflow being interrupted over the leading edge of the wing like that. It's not gonna really amount to much on a plane this size, in my opinion. But the thing is you can also take a hair dryer, not a heat gun, and you can warm that up to dry it out. But you have to be careful because foam will eventually dimple and it will look like crap if you let it go too far, okay? So we're gonna continue with our build. And Cam Crew is gonna take that off to the side for me. So as you can see, really easy build and we've added some extra details today for you. And we're still just a few minutes into this build, okay? So if you guys want additional, if you have additional questions and comments, leave them in the comments below. We'll try our best to get to them. We try to keep up, but we've been getting worse about it as our channel has grown. It's really tough to keep up uh, certain, once you're past a certain point, and we're past that certain point, unfortunately. But Patreon does give you a little bit better access to comments and questions like that if you're one of our supporters on Patreon, thanks. Brown is toward the rear now for the flap, which is on the bottom. I'm just gonna stack them like this, and we're gonna just get them so that I have enough room to get to this rod, of course. So I may have to kind of start this because otherwise I won't be able to reach. No, okay. I'm gonna have to start this. You guys see what's going on here? I'm just fighting to get it started into the wing. What the heck is going on there? There we go. Okay, so I got it started. It's not straight, it's like at an angle. Okay, so this is the aileron. I know the aileron is unmarked. Brown is toward the rear. Okay, so brown is on the same side as the other brown. And then the flap is gonna go toward the rear. In this case, toward the rear as well. All right, so that should get all of our landings done. Ha <laughs> ha, pun intended. So now I'm gonna slide this wing in after I get those two wires started. And I'm just pulling in my Y cables so that I can get everything up to where the receiver is going to sit. And the camera crew is going to move to the other side so she can see what's going on. As you can see now, there's two Y cables that I'm working through that little channel because I want the slack to go into the plane, into the fuse because I'm really, one of them is kind of fighting me a little bit. But I don't want to yank out that, that uh, quick disconnect. There we go, come on now, come on now. See what I'm worried about down there, guys? 
see this one wire, I wanna get that one wire to go into the hole because otherwise I feel like we're gonna fight it. And it's kind of hard to get your hand down in there. My hand is just a little bit too big for that cavity. Come on. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the other line, which is here. I know you guys can't see some of this stuff, so it's, we try our best to show you everything, but there's certain steps we just can't show because it's too tight of a spot. But you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. See how that wire's got that double back on it? It's got that little, little doohickey on it. There, get in there. Okay, once it's in there, there, we'll get a good closure. I was just afraid that was gonna cause the wing to catch the wire and then it would make this weird bump on the bottom. So without further ado, I am gonna grab the plane stand. The plane stand is a handy tool. If you don't have this tool, you might wanna think about getting one. It's like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. And it is definitely something that has come in handy. It works better than your wife's blankets because you don't have to uh, suck it into the turbine and rip it up unless you really want to. All right, so now that the plane is upside down, you'll notice that the other side we did not catch that, and guess what? It did, it did exactly like I was afraid it would. Did you guys see that mm -hmm. when I flipped it? That's what I wanted to fix. Okay, so we're just pushing these down in the tape joint too as well. Yeah, that's, that's down at the bottom of the wing, and so it catches the foam. That's what's going on. All right, so two millimeter drive again. Looks like FMS in true fashion has given us one extra screw, which is kind of cool. Okay, get these lined up. Very easy, very, very smooth build so far. And that includes the damage. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I'm hoping yours isn't damaged, but to be honest with you, the way it was packaged, it kind of makes me think they're probably gonna be damaged. We're just at 32 minutes right now. That's like barely a, it's barely anything for a Brian Phillips RC video. So are we just gonna throw the landing gear on while we're down here? Yeah, I think we should. Cause then you okay. can set it on its on a feet gear. to do radio setup. Yeah, good idea. This one doesn't wanna start. Okay, um, I think I wanna flip this. Cause I feel like it's, would be better over there. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. So this is one of those times when you don't wanna to have to press too hard, okay? So we have one extra. One extra is typical, and it's usually per size with FMS. And so we've always appreciated that about FMS. Providing that extra screw helps to minimize shipping issues, because then if they're shorting you one, you're still getting enough, okay? This one doesn't wanna start because I don't think the head's gonna line up until I pull on this a little bit. Just sometimes kind of hard to get a hold of the, the wing. There we go, now it's started. Now watch for the pucker here. Nice, we don't even have to get a pucker, it's a hard stop. Okay, so that being said, very quick, very easy build. And uh, I guess technically we still have to put those landing gear on. Let's do that right now. We'll mark the CG, get the battery in there and set up radio setup last. And now this is a different size. So I'm gonna grab my screwdriver set. So we were on two millimeters before. I think we're gonna be down to 1.5. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a 1.5 millimeter for that set screw, okay? So that set screw, of course, is gonna go onto here. And there is a flat machined right here, if you can give them a close up. I'm gonna have to come around because I can't see. Okay, so what we have here is we have a machined flat. So that's how you're gonna tell how this thing lines up, okay? So we're gonna drop this down. And I'm gonna run that thing tight. It should self-center on that shaft, but that shaft, it just goes onto one of those weird linkages like we saw on the servo. Okay, so that's tight now. Do you have now, to do the one on the other side? You realize there's one on the other side. There's not a flat on that side. Okay, so these things obviously go back, okay? So as a result, you can tell which direction these mount. 
So that is not the way this one goes. This one goes over here, okay? So there's the pocket that it falls into. There it goes, and then these snap in. So that's pretty easy. Toolless, but you know, in my opinion, it's sort of frustrating because you have toolless install on the mains, but not the nose gear. Um, seems sort of counterproductive, but that's fine. It's fixed gear, guys. A lot of you guys are gonna fly this plane without gear anyway, but I love that the gear are spring-loaded. That is awesome. And then also, I must say, what a gorgeous, gorgeous plane. It's very light, and light planes tend to fly good. So, if they're fast, they're faster if they're light. If they're slow, they're slower if they're light. So there's really nothing to lose by having a, a lighter plane. You can always battery up a plane if you wanna make it heavier. Okay, so that being said, we've got all the wires coming out. A little bit messy right now, but we'll be able to definitely get that managed without too much trouble. Just kinda looking at what we have to deal with. Um, we have a flap wire here. I want to try to pull a little slack up. Okay, good. Now we got that even. I like to pull these labels back just a hair so we can see our brown. Uh, brown is down. Ailerons. Okay. Of course, we have the elevator. So we're up to three channels needed. I already know what we need, but I'm just going to count it out to be on the safe side. Rudder, if you're not going to split your rudder. And then of course, I'm gonna untangle that wire and there's our throttle and then the thrust reverse. So that'd be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So six is a good way to start. Now we'll pause and grab some selections and come out. Okay, so we decided while we were paused to get those receivers out, we we're gonna just take a look at this again. So we just basically uh, came in with a Q-tip and just have been cleaning any sort of little bits of uh, excess material from the touch up and then just take the dry side and just kind of clean it up. Now you can get it really close. And then basically what we do is we'll just run this hair dryer on a low temperature. It's warm, not hot. And we just kind of like let that stuff set up. It goes a little quicker that way. You certainly don't have to do the hair dryer thing. The hair dryer thing can also cause problems. If you go too hot, it'll dimple this foam. Okay. So now also my wife has a million different types of nail polish here. And this is, this one's called chandelier. And then it's got this uh, special type of light that will help set it. And it's not, it's not ultraviolet, but it's, what is it? It's just an LED. It's just an LED, whatever that means. So we're gonna plug this in and just have that ready. I took apart one of her nail dryer yeah, it came things. came in a little kit like this. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do real quick. Super light coat. Oh, good Lord. Is that what it's supposed to look like? It's gonna be thick, but you can put it on thin. That's what they always say. So this is dried, hopefully, enough to receive this little bit of touch up. And the reason I thought, you know, I was like, you know, silver is really hard to match. So I said, this is probably the closest we're gonna to get to having a near perfect uh, touch up and also being able to dry it really quick because this stuff dries like to the touch uh, within what, like 30 seconds 60 or so? 60 seconds with that LED. Okay. So that makes for a, actually a pretty amazing touch up job, I would say, given the amount of time that we spent. We spent, what, five minutes off camera screwing with it just to kind of get it to dry down. Yeah. Okay, so there's that. And then this thing, normally this would be inside of, uh, you know, like a, a machine that you put your hand in, and then you yeah. press a button. And so I took it apart and made it so I could point it at parts like this. And then that light just has a timer on it. So it just runs for so many seconds. And each cycle, of course, is the number of seconds that the timer uh, appropriates. So in this case, it's gonna go for about, I think it's like what, 30 Six, seconds? 60. 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. So we probably won't bore you with the whole thing, but you'll see it will shut off here in a second. And then we might have to run like a couple cycles because I, I probably did a thicker coat than you would if you were doing your nails. So we'll come right back when it's done. Okay, so we're getting toward the tail end of the first cycle and it just shut off, okay? So now just to give you an idea of how well this stuff works, it's already 
dry to the touch to where I can touch it. So I'm gonna run, I can touch it, but it just feels kind of tacky a little bit still. So we're gonna run one more cycle and we'll pause it. You guys don't need to see that. So after two cycles, we've got it to where you can pretty much handle the plane again and you don't have to worry about it. And it just looks like somebody had a small accident on the edge of the plane. No big deal. All right, so getting back to where we left off, which is for radio setup, we wanna figure out what we're gonna use to actually get this thing radioed up. Now, if you don't want stabilization, but you want all the features and you can use an AR620, it's gonna give you the full features. Um, this is not gonna have stabilization or AS3X and super duper limited telemetry. The telemetry that you get back is like pretty much useless to us. Um, you might get like the receiver voltage or something like that. But over here is what I prefer is probably the 630 or the 631. Now 631 is gonna give you an antenna which might allow for a little bit more range even though Spectrum claims that this internal antenna is just as good. I like this for this plane because of the nature of the relatively tight spot that we're gonna mount it. And also, to be honest with you, I think it's gonna look nice because all these wires can be end pinned in. As you can see, we got end pins here, whereas these would be top pin, okay? Either way is gonna be fine, but I think we're gonna go with the 630. So if you guys are curious about that, obviously check the links in the video description below and you can buy the plane, you can buy the receiver, and then of course you can get the NX10 or whatever NX you like or IX that you like. But I would suggest right now the 10 came in very handy on the F18. It was one of the few times where we needed all the channels and we used every channel mm -hmm. and uh, probably could have used more too, but <laughs> we're good. So. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and mark this. The camera crew has put this manual in my way so that the center of gravity would be ready, but we're not ready for that for some time. So we'll come back to that. Now, the normal first step when we're doing a radio setup is we have to get our wires prepped so that we're ready to plug them in, but we have to need to know, we kind of need to know where to plug them in. And so in order to figure out where to plug them in, we have to set up a profile in our radio. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and do that next as part of our radio setup. So we'll fire around the transmitter. We're gonna go add new model. We're gonna cancel them back and go to add new model. We're gonna create a new acro. Okay, so it's gonna come back out after a little bit. It takes longer and longer the more models you have because it takes time to find the free memory location, okay? So the model select is where we just came from. Model type, we just set. Model name, this is where we're gonna type it in. Now, make no mistake, that says 176, but there's like another 30 or 40 on top of that too. So mm -hmm. it's, we're getting close to model memory limits. Yeah, we are. There's 250 model memories allowed in here, but there is external hard drive and an internal hard drive. So I'm not really sure why there's really a limit, but there is a limit. So just understand that guys. All right, so we have the Futura, the FMS Futura 64. Okay, so we'll hit back, uh, aircraft type, we have a one aileron, one flap, and then normal for the tail. And then we'll select an image from here. I don't remember, they don't have a lot of jets in the standard image file. Probably closer to the Habu. And then flight mode setup. We are gonna use a flight mode because we're using the Spectrum setup. We can do that and we can get our audio call outs, which is nice. So I'm gonna set it to switch. Well, hold on, let's think about this. We don't have a retracts, so I'll put on switch A. Now, because I'm using switch A, a two position switch, there's gonna be AS3X on and then safe on, but I'm not gonna have an offsetting. If I use D, then I use uh, the three position switch, I'll do AS3X, I'll do off, and then I'll do safe. But because we have flaps, I wanna keep B reserved for flaps and I wanna use A for safe, okay? So now we can go back, we'll go to smoking, spoken flight mode. So flight mode one, flight mode two. So I can click in here, back, back, and I'm gonna type in AS3X. I want AS3X in the back position. Remember, this is just a label. It doesn't have any bearing on the actual setting. We'll do that later in the setup portion. Uh, just stay tuned with us. So we'll just type in AS3X here. All right, so that's just the name. And then we're gonna make it call out the audio event, which is way down here, so we'll pause right it. Okay, so as I suggested, I usually see save first. There's safe mode and there's AS3X. Of course, it's on the other end of this list. 
Okay, now in flight mode two, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and cancel, cancel, and then I'm gonna type the word safe. Okay, again, this, this is just a label. Same thing with the audio, it's just a label. It doesn't have any actual bearing. Whoops, gotta spell it right. It doesn't have any actual bearing on the mode, okay? So all the way down here again. Okay, so here's safe mode. All right, so we have safe and AS3X. Safe mode, AS3X mode. Okay. All right, so channel assign, we're gonna change B on aux2 to inhibit because we don't want that. And we don't necessarily want gear attached to A. Hmm. I guess it doesn't really matter because we're just gonna use that channel for something else. Let me think out loud for a second. That is actually gonna probably be used for thrust reverse. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to switch G, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, all right, and just keep in mind that even though this is a six channel receiver, there's actually more channels above the six pluggable channels, and that allows us to have a master gain on aux three in this case, and then the mode on aux two. Oh wait, would that be aux two? I guess we'll have to find out what we're gonna use. So we have throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, which is gonna be thrust reverse, and then flaps, and then aux two, which will be our mode, because these are pluggables and we need all of them. Mm -hmm. And then this is gonna be our, yeah, so I said that right. Yes. Okay, so that being said, we know how to plug this stuff in now, so it's a pretty straightforward process. We'll pop this out of the case. And I really do like these because no antenna makes a really nice clean package. Now this is a spatially aware receiver, so you do have to mount it, and there's a bind button. So you don't have to use a bind plug, but you can also use a bind plug if you prefer. Also, you see S plus and minus, minus is down, brown is down, as I often say. You can see how they've silk screened that. Try to block the light here. There you go. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty straightforward process and it's very similar from plane to plane. So if you're just watching this for the first time, don't worry. It's not hard, but it will be harder as you get into planes like this where there's a lot of complex wing types. This is a basic wing type. You could literally follow the instructions for this plane and you could do the same exact thing on that Ranger, uh, that Ranger 1220 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And you can do that or you could put it on this Ranger 1800 millimeter because they're just a basic inboard flap and it doesn't have anything to do with the speed, okay? Now, the only thing that would change about this and the Ranger is that we have thrust reverse on this, and I don't think we have thrust reverse on that, okay? So we are gonna address that as we continue. Now, this has to be mounted somewhere, but we can mount it after we land our wires. It makes it a lot easier that way. Okay, so first things first, let's get our throttle plugged in. Throttle is gonna be on channel one. So remember, brown is down. So black in this case is the same as brown, red is red, and then yellow or orange or white would be signal. That's gonna go to port one, not pin set one, but port one. Then this one's gonna be the signal line for gear. So gear, of course, is gonna be on channel five. So we're just plugging into the, uh, to the actual signal portion of it. See that? Pretty simple stuff. Then our channel two is supposed to be ailerons. Now, if you're gonna do flap runs or some sort of a weird configuration, then uh, you're not gonna get the setup from me necessarily. You'll have to kind of work through that. But if you're curious about that and you haven't seen the F-18 video yet, which is a good chance you're not gonna see it first, since this is a new release, it's gonna be released before the F-18. Even though the F-18 was done first, in reality, this one just showed up, so we have to get this one done. Okay, so then elevator. Three. Elevator is three. So we'll go ahead and I'm just, I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm doing, but every time I work a new cable, I untangle any sort of obvious tangles and that helps a lot with, with uh, just basic cable management issues, okay? So the orange is gonna go up on port three and the brown is down, okay? So then we're gonna, and I'm, what I'm doing too is every time I, I do this, I pull the slack toward me. You can also push it away, whichever direction, just do the same thing for each of them. Okay, so I have rudder on four which is the next one, so that's channel four. Okay, and I don't like how this is tangling, so I'm gonna actually pull this back just a little bit further, and I'm gonna wrap under all the rest of the cables. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick that back into six, and then we have flaps on channel six, right? Mm -hmm. 
So you put thrust reverse back on five. Yeah, it's on five. I just re re landed it. You just said six. Just so oh, I'm confused. sorry. On five. Yep. Okay. You did it right. All right. So now that we've got this big bundle of wires, we have to try to figure out what we're going to do with all of it. Now, that's why I like this plane right now, because guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to grab my XT60 termination for the electronic speed control, the ESC. And I'm just going to hold that in my hands and I'm just going to stuff all this stuff back here. Um, one thing about jets is they oftentimes they, they will sit up on their hind legs like that and it drives me nuts. But the thing is, some jets, if you're lucky, once you put the canopy on, they will fall on their main, on their uh, tricycle, on the nose gear and everything. See how nice and easy that was? Now, the only thing I don't like about mounting this on the side is it's hard to find that square position, but it would be actually really nice if we could put it on the side, and here's why. If you mount this on the side, you're not gonna get much thicker than a 4S battery is not gonna be much thicker than what we've got for this strap area. And then that allows you to slide that battery back and actually take up real estate back here that you wouldn't otherwise be able to take care of if you mount it to the board here, okay? But just keep in mind, this has like a slow, steady sweep to it. And so if you watch this receiver, as you go through, it's gonna change its, its position relative to the aircraft, okay? The other thing is you don't wanna accidentally hit the bind button. But I'm thinking if I come up here, I can get that thing square to the reality and that's actually beautiful. So that's what we're doing. I normally don't like to mount there, but I'm gonna mount it there because I might think about it a little bit as we get the mounting tape. But I'm just thinking out loud about this. I don't know if I have enough room up here to mount it because we do mount sometimes up there. And then this is sort of a flatter area back here. So we could also take a look at that section. Just, there's a couple of these wires. You can't get your hand in here very good. Mm -mm. And so it's really, it's kind of frustrating, but you see, I'm just trying, every time I try to get my hand in there for anything, it's been very annoying. But you see, if this is lined up straight with the plane, then you could just tape it down there and you'd be fine. But the thing is, then you're committed to that. And I don't know how this plane flies. And that's one thing you guys may not realize about this channel is that when we do these planes, we're really doing them for the first time. We've never done this plane before. We have no idea how it's gonna perform and we have to make some value judgments. And we know that you guys are gonna try to copy us um, if you're new to the hobby. So we wanna give good information, but we actually don't know until we try it. And based on lots of past experience, we can give you a good, a good educated guess, but it's still just that. It's still an educated guess, okay? So I think this is probably the best option here, okay? And I think if I go too far forward, it starts to kind of swivel back the other direction. So that's probably where we want it. And I'm just trying to kind of sight down the length of the plane to make sure I have a spot that's nice and square to the uh, airframe. And I think that's where it's gonna be. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna peel this back. Now these things are notoriously bad. The other day I stabbed myself with an X-Acto knife. I know you guys are excited to see that, but that'll actually be in the F-18 video. So if you guys just stay tuned for that, you can uh, point and laugh just like the knife was doing. By the way, this, this excess cable is just driving me nuts. That this one, is one really it's really long. long. Well, it's because there's a Y cable for the rudder. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around the cable set like this. And then I don't know if I can tie it through or if that's just gonna cause a problem. No, it didn't really work. I'm just gonna undo that. But I think that's gonna be good enough. It's gonna keep it, it's gonna keep it oriented the way I want. And that should be fine. I could throw a zip tie on there, but I don't think it's necessary. And now that I have that thing stuck down, this backing is so dang hard to get out of here. And that's why I'm gonna get a screwdriver because it usually does help quite a bit. In fact, we'll pause while we grab that. All right, so I got a screwdriver. We're just gonna try to get under this backing. These Lemon RX receivers, this is what this came from. And by the way, if you guys are gonna use a Lemon RX, that'd be fine but just keep in mind, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of as many of the features because the seven channel with stabilization is gonna require that you use the seventh channel for your mode and the fifth channel. So it ends up, it's a master gain in mode. So you lose a couple of channels, okay? All right, so here we go. So now I wanna slide this in approximately there and then just push it tight against the wall. Now I am concerned about 
where this is spatially, okay? But I'm not necessarily concerned to the point of I'm not happy with that, that position, okay? I just, I want to make sure that the plane knows where it is. I'm using this long screwdriver. It's kind of makes it a little easier to manipulate these cables to a spot where they can get in that pocket. Nice. Okay, good. So now this is the 2200 uh, 4S. We're going to use this right now. So I'm just going to slip it under the straps. I have no idea if we're good on CG where we're going to be putting this right now, but it's at least going to get us started. Okay. All right, so just slipping it through. And then we're, we're just gonna try putting it right on the straps. It's almost never lines up that way, but maybe we'll get lucky once. I kind of doubt it. These are high quality straps, by the way. Sometimes we get really chintzy straps in the lower, uh, lower cost choices. And this is actually a pretty low cost airplane, so I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be popular. You guys are going to enjoy it. It's going to be a good bang for the buck. And we love when you guys get a good bang for the buck, like what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. I want you guys to be able to see what you're getting into. Okay, so let's just check that landing gear. Oh, it's so nice. It's oh, actually wow. nice and soft. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so first things first, we have everything ready to bind. We, we have more settings to do, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit back. I'm going to click, scroll down to bind. I'm gonna be prepared with the yes. Now, I can go ahead and grab the plug. I can plug this in. As I said, the XT60 will work with the EC, or excuse me, the IC3. Now I'm gonna reach in here. It's a little bit tight, but that's okay. I only gotta do it the one time. Okay, now I'm gonna click. I'm gonna go back to bind. It timed out, it always does. Okay. Just letting it finish its, its auto configuration on the telemetry. We're gonna have flyby telemetry on this type of receiver. But because we don't have an avian ESC, we're not gonna know our pack voltage, which is a bummer. Now, if you put an avian ESC in here, you could actually get pack voltage. And also look at the back side of the canopy, lots of room for big batteries. That's awkward. <sighs> Are you kidding me? <sighs> I dropped it right on the the thumb knob. Okay. All right. So first things first, we are going to finish our radio setup before we get too excited. So there's a couple of different things we can do first. The first of which is checking control directions, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. That's incorrect. Y'all left, y'all right. Steering is correct. Okay, flaps aren't even set up, so we gotta do that too. So servo setup, travel, scroll over to reverse. Ailerons need to reverse. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. Okay, now we can go down to dual rates and expo. We're just gonna set that right now. On set to switch F, 5%, then 10, then 20. And we're going to drop the rates back down to 90 for that higher setting. That gives us our middle setting for takeoff. And then if we want less, we can go half or we can go double with a little extra off the top of the rates. Okay. We're going to copy that for all three control axis, which is going to give us a very good starting point. But we're not married to that starting point. We can always make adjustments after our maiden flight if we need to, or even after the second or third or fifth or hundredth flight. Just remember, keep in mind, guys, I try to share uh, something that is going to make it easy for most. There are some of you out there that are going to want to have this set uh, a little bit different, and you've got a special way you'd like it. That's fine. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. You can do this however you want, but just my suggestion is if you deviate from the suggestions we give you, just make sure don't let me know when you crash your plane because I try to give good advice about this stuff, and sometimes people don't listen, and then it's, uh, they get frustrated with me. All right, so there we go. So dual rates and expo, throttle cut, of course that's turned on to switch H and we're gonna go ahead and test that right now, holding the plane. Yep, it's working. And throttle cut's now off. We're gonna test it again. Ooh, very nice. Very little throttle given and lots of air movement. That's what we like to see. Throttle curve, we're not messing with. Digital switch, we will do digital switch setup at some point for the thrust reverse. Okay, flap system, we have to set up. We're gonna turn that to switch B. 
Okay, so now in order to set this up, I need to figure out which direction I'm gonna adjust it, okay? So I'm in this mode right now, so this would be my normal flight mode, so I wanna put those to the home position. This looks like we're gonna go to minus 100, and as usual with FMS servo setup, we have to go into, excuse me, servo setup, we have to go into the flaps and change this to probably 125 or so, and that's gonna get you right to the home position. Then you got takeoff and landing, have not been set yet, but we're gonna do that right now. So flap system. So we have minus 100. Remember, you can only go to minus 100 plus 100 in this range. Okay, so for takeoff flaps, that's a little bit too much. I wanna do something more like, like that. And then for landing flaps, I wanna go nuts and just make those things barn doors. Except it's not moving. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, now I need to look underneath the plane and make sure we're not gonna be crashing the servos. So as you can see, I'm just gonna scroll as we've got it upside down. There's minus 100, right? Okay. Now, I don't hate that. Let's see how strong this is. Can I lay it down gently? I never do that with planes, but I can on this one because it's so light. Now I'm at minus 100. I'm gonna do elevator correction at, let's just do 12 and let's do, let's, let's actually do six and 10. That's usually what we get away with. Now for servo setup, I can go into my flaps and I can now change the bottom of the throw. See, look at that, I can get even more out of them. Mm -hmm. I go all to 150 if I want. I think I'm gonna back it off just a hair to be on the safe side, so 145, okay? So now let's look at our takeoff flaps and landing flaps. But I don't like fast acting flaps, I forgot to set that. So we're gonna change that speed to two seconds. Okay, takeoff flaps. Landing flaps. Now we're just looking for binding. I'm mostly concerned at the bottom of the sweep. Make sure we're not running into anything. We are running into the foam here. A Little bit on the foam there. Don't like that. Watch this. See how it's hitting the foam? Mm -hmm. I think we're okay though. I think we're all right on that. Okay, so we'll flip the plane back over. Just, I'm kind of being a little bit dainty. I don't want to hit that repair spot that we did even though it's technically sealed in and it should be okay, um, I'm still trying to be extra careful with it. I hope yours isn't damaged in the same way, but at the same time, I gotta say, this plane looks amazing regardless. It really does look nice. And it's kind of funny because the servo sort of matches the trim livery, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so now finishing our setup. This has been a very easy setup. It's been a very easy build. Let's go back through our controls. Elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right. Y'all left, y'all right. Take off flaps, look good. Landing barn doors, perfect, okay. And because of that, you know what, I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just throw caution in the wind, go up to 14, I'm gonna go to eight. I just feel like we got so much deflection on the landing flaps, we're probably gonna need to take advantage of that. Okay, so very good there. Not gonna set up any mixes on this. Uh, timer, we'll set a, Five minute timer should be a, uh, five minute, yeah, I don't know, five minute might be a little bit much, but we'll try it anyway. We're gonna, at one minute, we're gonna have a voice call out at 20 seconds, nothing, 10 seconds, we're gonna have voice countdown and then tone and vibrate at expiration with a tone every minute thereafter. Okay, and then we have to do forward programming next. So forward programming is only done after you have all your controls moving in the right directions and the quantities you want. Also just noticed something, this rudder is not quite square. You see that? Mm, just slightly. Just barely. Okay, let's fix that. Now how do you tell this is not square? See that? That's the first and only surface I see that's out of alignment, okay? Let's fix that right now. I'm gonna show you guys two ways to do it. If you don't have one of these ball link tools like this, check our supplies link. Uh, this is something that you can get. It's not an expensive tool but you do wanna have them if you're gonna do a lot of planes. So this one edge kinda of goes underneath and then you can grab. Oh, come on, there it is. Come on now. Kinda of lifts it up so you can get it off of there easy. And all I have to do is just like twist this out half a turn and then we should be good to go. Oh yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Show the people at home. See this, I'm gonna push this down. 
Do you think we need to go another? No, that's pretty perfect right there. I think that's right pretty there. good. I think it's gonna mm. be too much. If you yeah, go. if we go another half again, watch what happens, guys. Now we're too yeah, far, too we far. overshot. Okay, so we'll just snap this back on. Now you can snap that one on real easy. Sometimes they don't, and you can use this to snap them on too. So if you don't have this tool and you wanna get that done, there is another way. And the other way is to grab yourself a very small Phillips screwdriver. And you can undo the screw that holds the ball link onto the end of the control arm, okay? Now, the only drawback is you have to turn an entire revolution for your adjustment. So it becomes quite a coarse adjustment. So my suggestion would be to pry that off by any means possible, just don't break it, okay? All right, so getting back to this, we were just going into forward programming when I noticed that, so my apologies, but when you notice stuff like that, the best move is to fix it right then before you forget. Remember, when you build a plane, there's not some list that you go through. Check, 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 check. Every plane's a little bit different. Mine's gonna come out of the box and have a damaged wing. Yours is gonna come out of the box and have nothing wrong with it, okay? Mine's gonna come out of the box and I'm gonna start with the wings. Yours is gonna come out of the box and you're gonna start by looking through the manual like a smart person. Well, anyway, everybody's gonna do it a little bit different and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of we're gonna to try to touch on the high notes so that you can fill in the gaps with your own opinions. All right, so coming back around, we've got forward programming started, gyro settings, first time setup. It's gonna give you this big long warning about blah, blah, blah. If you make changes, go back through first time setup, okay? Set up level and press continue. Now put it on its nose and get ready to set hit continue. So I like to do it this way. The nose is hardened with plastics. So you can lay that on the nose with a little bit of weight. Click continue, this is gonna help it to determine the position of the receiver and you can see it picked correctly, or at least as far as I can tell. Now don't worry, we're gonna be vetting that about three different ways by the time we're done, okay? To make sure that we don't have a complete catastrophic disaster because we got it wrong, okay? So to continue, it's gonna reset gain channel. The gain channel is gonna be on the right knob, which is aux three. So it just gives you a little cheat sheet there. Now, if you set it to something and there's a free channel, it's gonna make the assumption that you want it to be assigned to that channel. And then it's gonna do that for you in the foreground, instead of having to exit this menu, go back to system setup, disconnect RF, and then scroll down to channel assign. Just so you know, we found that out doing the F18, okay? All right, so that's correct. Now this is the gain channel. Listen, it's gonna dance once. One dance, not two, because two's with safe setup, okay? So the receiver is rebooting, so you can click now. So at this point, AS3X is technically on, but we're not done setting anything up. Gyro settings, AS3X settings. I like to turn this up to four for this part. The gains, you can know we're in flight mode one versus flight mode two, but it's not changing because we haven't actually set the flight mode yet, okay? Also, we want that to be adjustable. So we're gonna go into F mode setup. Not changing, guys. Okay, what do I want it to be? I want it to be switch A. So switch A should be set to auxiliary two, correct? Yes. But it's not set to auxiliary two. We decoupled that from B, if you guys recall. Okay, so I'm gonna go to input. I'm gonna go all the way down to aux two. The input is gonna be set to A. That makes the assignment within channel assign. We learned that yesterday, okay? So now it's A. Okay, so now you can see when I flip the switch, it changes from flight mode one to flight mode three. Pretty cool, okay? So I want AS3X active in both modes, okay? Now I wanna go down to flight mode setup again. Excuse me, I wanna go to AS3X settings again and then I wanna see what happens. Look at this, now we've got a new option, fixed or adjustable. I want it to be adjustable and it's gonna take a moment and I want it still adjustable. You notice how it's now adjustable instead of fixed and it started with fixed, fixed, fixed and then it changed adjustable, adjustable, adjustable. That's because the computer has to actually tell it to do that. So when you're in forward programming, just keep in mind, you're talking to the receiver. The receiver is managing this crap and you're just controlling it here, okay? So there's upstairs and downstairs. This is downstairs. This has a transmitter and a receiver built in. That's upstairs. It's a transmitter and a receiver. It's full duplex communication, okay? If you weren't aware of it, it's actually a transceiver, but nobody calls it that. It's a receiver and a transmitter, even though they are both, both, 
Hopefully I haven't confused you too much. All right, so getting back to the point. So we've got gain level at 4X. That's only temporary for the moment. Now we can do first time setup on safe. First time setup on safe is very basic. It's not hard, don't be intimidated. Flight mode channel is already set. It's gonna update automatically. Remember, they're talking to each other. They're handshaking. This guy's telling that guy what this guy needs to know because that guy knows it and he doesn't. Well, soon he's gonna be listening to that guy so we can get feedback on telemetry data. And also this guy's gonna be telling it, oh, he's controlling the sticks. Don't do anything wrong. He's doing it. No, no, he means to crash. And he's like, really, really? Why doesn't he correct? Okay, anyway, that's only for certain people, I mm -hmm. guess. Okay, so next is highlighted, so I'm gonna hit next. All right, so we're gonna just continue because we've already set the FM mode. Okay, now I wanna be in flight mode three for safe. The audio callout is just a label, people. Doesn't mean anything to the system here or the system upstairs. It's just a label until we activate it. And then the label will be applied on top of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so next. All right, so this is where you have to level the plane and capture the trim attitude or the attitudes. So like if you mounted that thing, instead of mounting it square to the side, if you mounted it like this, that's bad because the plane's gonna be flying forward, but it's not gonna know what yaw axis it's at. So it's gonna think it needs to correct and you're gonna tend to have a correction like this or a correction like that. Because we, can correct for pitch and roll, we don't have that problem here. But on yaw, we don't have a correction, okay? So that's what I wanted to point out. So level model and capture attitude. So this makes sense for like a tail dragger. A lot of times they're gonna be sitting at a steep angle, okay? It's so like if this, if this is a tail dragger, it's gonna be sitting like this. Well, when you're flying, it's gonna be sitting like this, right? Or if you have a nose, if you have a tricycle plane that sits like this, there are a few that sit kind of with an up attitude like that you wanna make sure to put it on a plane stand or something like that. In our case, we're good. It's claiming that there's a minus two pitch, which I don't understand, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Minus eight, yeah, don't believe you. Minus seven, really? That's kinda of weird. So that's the pitch axis. So let's just, let's trick it. Let's see what happens when we go to a pitch like this. Yeah, so that's now plus eight, okay? So I'm gonna let it down and I'm gonna do it one more time. If you see a number that's outlandish like that, out of the box, don't freak out because that number is a lot smaller than you probably realize. Now, also, if you put your plane in safe mode and the plane like deviates down or deviates up all the time, that's what you need to adjust, okay? You can manually adjust it or you can let it adjust it by capturing it in a level status. But just remember, there is an oscillation in all of the outputs for pitch, roll, and yaw because these are gyros. So anyway, all right, continuing on. It's so moving to the next stage. Okay, so flight mode one, flight mode three, it's updated the screen. Safe is gonna be angle, demand, self level. And then this is gonna be off for safe. Making sense now, isn't it? Now my audio labels make sense. Now watch, two dances coming. So we have two dances, that tells you that safe is on, but it's not necessarily on with a switch, right? So I'm gonna click, go back to the main menu where we are, okay? So we have elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right, take off flaps, landing flaps. I haven't done the, the gear yet, so don't freak out. We'll get that in a second here, okay? Now we also haven't checked throttle uh, or thrust reverse, which we will get to because we still have to set those up. But the first thing's first. I wanna see if AS3X is working. So I don't hear anything, why? Oh, it's probably because we haven't given any throttle. Okay, so now is a good time to check safe. Safe is on, finding the quickest route to level. Now look at the elevator, trying to bring the nose up. Now that the nose is up, I'm gonna try to flip, trying to bring the nose down. Okay, so safe is definitely working. It's working in the correct direction on the two axis of control that safe generally takes care of, which is roll, and pitch or pitch and roll. Okay, now I'm gonna turn back on uh, AS3X, but I'm gonna show you a trick. Pull your stick down into the right, look at the amount of throw. Look at the amount of throw, now watch this. Boop. That is because we have limited angles. We have limited bank angles in safe. Now if you're in safe, here's another trick you can do. 
I'm gonna hold this stick down and I'm gonna take this plane. Now look at the ailerons. What's gonna happen? Eventually you're gonna get to the point where you can see the maximum, I gotta go to the other side. You're gonna see that's the limited angle that you can go to. It's not gonna let you roll any further. You can open that window up, by the way. Okay, now the other way, same thing. Now look at the elevator. Elevator's full up. That's as steep as you can climb right now. Now elevator down, that's as steep as you can go down. Okay, make sense? Now you know your angle limits and you can adjust those angle limits in the safe setup, okay? Which is in the Ford program. Now, one more thing we gotta do is we gotta give some throttle so that our AS3X comes up. I've got my master gain all the way up. It's gonna be crazy, throttle cuts off. A little bit of juice, sounds good. Throttle cuts back on. We've gone over 25%. So now AS3X should be active and you can already hear it. It's going like crazy. Okay, rudder to the left, oh yeah, going to the left. To the right, oh yeah, you can probably see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Elevator up, going up. Elevator down, going down. Now remember, this is not to be confused with safe. Safe wood. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Now ailerons, up and down, up and down. If you can't see, take your hand and lay it on top of the surface and move it up. I can feel it, I can feel it going down, I can feel it going up, okay? Same thing with the rudder, I can feel it going that way, I can feel it coming back. Same thing with the elevator, I can feel it going up, I can feel it going down, okay? Now, for those of you that can't see what I'm talking about, look at the aileron. As I rotate this, it's gonna go up, it's resisting the movement, it's gonna go down, it's resisting the movement. And always check both sides just in case something is wrong or you have a split aileron configuration like we did on the F-18. Up, down, rudder, rudder, okay? So now, listen, listen through my mic. Master gain, all the way off, all the way on, 50%, zero, 10%. 50%, 75%, 100%. Okay, good, we've tested all the features of the stabilizer. Now we can adjust from four ax down to one ax to get us ready to fly, okay? I'm gonna turn this back down. Now, if you guys are noticing a pattern, I'm just gonna interrupt myself for a second. If you're noticing a pattern, it's because there is a pattern. Now, every plane is gonna come out of the box and assemble a little bit different, but the basic principles of the radio setup now are almost always the same. Even when you jump into a more robust wing type like what we did on the F-18, okay? Which we set up full length flapper on. So it's gonna look like an aircraft carrier takeoff. It's gonna be so cool. And hopefully we're gonna have enough elevator to correct so we can take full advantage of it. Cause I hope that thing's gonna slow down like crazy. Um, and I'm super excited for it. It's just like I'm excited for this one. But the idea is radio setup is radio setup is radio setup is radio setup. It's always the same. So for those of you that are watching our 15th radio setup, I just wanna commend you on being one of our biggest supporters and we wanna thank you for watching repeatedly. But for most of you, we understand that you're only gonna probably watch four or five of these things and you're gonna say, I kinda got the hang of it and now I'm gonna do it on my own. You're not gonna hurt our feelings. We want you guys to be up flying. We don't want you to necessarily have to be watching this asking lots of questions. Now there's always gonna be new technology that's coming out and new ways and methods, and different, tricks or maybe you get a plane and you can't get it to work as good as you want so you watch through the entire video and you get some tips out of it great congratulations but at the end of the day we're here to help support you guys and get you in the air and so you don't have to sit there and watch brian phillips rc video so just hit play and go out to the field yeah we'll but still also, be here when you get back that's right probably probably by the time you get back and you're done fixing everything so but at the end of the day we understand that you guys are gonna you know kind of come to enjoy the videos, you're gonna watch them, and then you're, you're not gonna need us. And so when you don't need us anymore, just don't totally forget about us, please. Come back, smash the like button, watch a video once in a while, maybe buy some stuff from the links, and you will help to support us drastically. Because remember, we serve two mostly, two types of people in this RC community. That's brand new people coming to the community for the first time, just starting to fly, and those that are returning from a long hiatus that are just coming back and have no clue what DSMX means or what SAFE or what AS3X means. And we try to talk about ESCs and BECs and UBECs and SBECs 
and nine gram servos and pulse width modulation and different things like this, which most of you guys watching already know what every one of those things mean if you've seen two videos from Brian Phillips RC, which of course that could be 10 hours of your life, but still, the truth is at the end of the day, we're here to serve both the returning and the new audience to RC. We wanna get you guys, if you're sitting on the chair saying, I wish I could do that, we wanna help you get there by making the path as smooth and as easy and level as possible. Now, that being said, this is a hard sport. It's not easy. And anybody who tells you it is easy is lying to you and they're trying to sell you some garbage from China. And this is from China, it's not garbage, okay? Just like lots of stuff in my background. Now, we've reviewed lots of garbage from China and we've reviewed lots of good stuff from China. And it is hard to tell the difference. Very. And so what we're here to do is not to hide problems that China makes or to hide problems that other manufacturers make or distributors or hobby shops. We're here to tell you guys the full truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Because at the end of the day, I don't wanna take 600 bucks and throw it in the garbage can any more than you do, okay? So fortunately, this one's not quite 600 bucks, but if you crash two of them, Scott, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you're not Scott, you don't get what I'm talking about. So anyway, guys, that's what we got to say about it. And we hope that Scott sees this message, but I doubt he'll be watching this deep I'm into sure the video. It will be hilarious if he does. All right. So that being said, uh, guys, don't forget, follow the links, buy the stuff from the links. That's the best way you can support us. You can also do PayPal super thanks. Membership on YouTube, membership on PayPal, excuse me, on Patreon. Patreon. Yep. And uh, Patreon membership is probably the easiest access to me for communications, uh, notwithstanding, you know, like working with me on a day to day or something like that. But the truth is that is one easy way to get a hold of me because the way the notifications come in from YouTube, it's just like, if I had notifications, thought my phone would ever shut up. And uh, at least with Patreon, there's less of you. Hopefully that problem will be resolved someday. <laughs> but thank you if you are one of them. All right, so continuing on, where was I, camera crew? I have no idea. Um... Please, forward programming. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna change Turn down something. your gains. We're gonna turn down the gains. So going back into forward programming, I'm usually better at coming back to where I started, but. Mm. Okay, so this is gonna start. Once it does, I can go to gyro setting. I can go into AS3X settings, and then I can go down to the gain sensitivity. So I don't want four times, I want one times. Now this is a whole number, but there are fractional values too, and it scrolls funny. That is a known technical glitch. I don't know why it's not been fixed because there's been like three radio setups, or excuse me, there's been like two or three firmware updates since that problem started. But it doesn't matter because if you want to have less, you can go less. If you want to have more, you can go more. Just remember it's a little annoying because it'll kind of resist like, no, no soup for you. And you're like, yes, soup for me, maybe soup nobody, for me. Maybe nobody uses 0.5, so they just- They just stopped? Yeah, they just stopped trying to fix it. So, but anyway, 1X is where I usually leave it when I'm getting ready to fly. I think I've got like one plane that I left at 2X. Mm. But it's nice because then basically, okay, so here's my goal. At the end of a flight, I wanna know that my master gain is somewhere between you know 40 and 60%, somewhere in here because then when I start the next model up that has a similar configuration, I'm not gonna go from like no stabilization to drastic amounts of stabilization. And I do like to go in and fix the rates if I really get them locked in, except sometimes you're flying in crazy windy and sometimes you're flying in crazy calm conditions and you won't need as much stabilizer in the crazy calm as you will in the crazy windy, okay? So all right, now that we've talked about all those different things, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, y'all left, y'all right, Take off flaps, landing flaps. What's left? We have to check the retracts. So the retracts are not existent. So we don't have to check the retracts, but we do have to check thrust, thrust reverse. reverse. So how do we control thrust reverse? Let's talk about thrust reverse. The yellow cable. The yellow cable is basically a selectable between forward and reverse. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the throttle. Excuse me, throttle cuts off. I'm gonna hold the tail. Give some throttle. It's definitely blowing, as you can hear. That's at 11% uh, throttle, by the way. Pretty good okay. amount of blow for 11%. Yeah. Throttle cut is now on. Now, I'm gonna scroll over and I'm just gonna look at this mode. We have throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear. Gear is now controlled by switch G. Why not switch A? Because we switched it off of A, knowing that we were gonna have AS3X and safe assigned over here, okay? We did all that stuff already. It's already tested and vetted. This is my throttle hold. Throttle cut, throttle holds for helicopters, sorry guys. 
So this is a throttle cut, and then this is our master gains, and this is our dual rates and expo, and this is nothing today, this is nothing today, and this is flaps, and this is gear. Nope, this is AS3X and safe, see? Now, this is plus 100, this is minus 100, this is zero, okay? That's the way Spectrum does it, plus 100, minus 100 model, okay? Some companies do it differently, and this is the way we do it, okay? So there's plus 100, let's see what happens. Throttle cut is off. That's just reverse. Okay. Now, switch in the other condition. That's forward thrust, okay. So, we know that forward thrust is when it's at the negative 100 condition for gear, okay? Gear is also known as channel five. Throttle cuts back on. What I wanna do is I wanna go into digital switch setup and I wanna select switch G, okay? In the forward setting, I want my forward thrust, which is minus 100, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna just scroll this all the way to minus 100 and that means that with my switch in position zero, where that box is right now, which is where it currently sits, I'm gonna have this minus 100. That gives us forward thrust. In this setting, I want it to be plus 100, which is gonna be full thrust reverse. And you're like, wait, but that's, no, it's just on thrust reverse, not full thrust reverse. It just means that in this condition or this, I want the thrust to be going opposite normal, okay? Now, why am I setting two switches or two switch conditions to reverse thrust and only one to forward thrust? Here's why. I'm gonna make this position controllable thrust reverse and I'm gonna make this one pilot fatigue. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanna warn you guys, we have, okay, now I can walk out of this menu and I'm gonna show you real quick before we continue. Okay, throttle cut is currently off. A Little bit of forward thrust, it's working. Reverse thrust, reverse thrust, okay? So it's moving backwards, throttle cut shuts it off. That's an important safety feature. I wanna to talk to you about this, listen to the noise. Okay, you guys hear that? Throttle cuts on, now listen. There's a beep. Beep. You'll hear a beep. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I don't know why it does it sometimes and other times you don't hear it. But it's something that we've noticed and it might just be the way that the motor winds to a stop and it might also be a braking feature. It might also be an actual beep from the ESC and I think it's the, I think it's the latter. I think it's the beep from the ESC. Okay, now that being said, I don't wanna have a problem where I turn on my thrust reverse and this thing crashes like the F-15. The F-15 had fixed gear and I came in for a landing and I put it in full pilot fatigue and it did not work. It bounced and then it went full thrust and it went take off. And then at a certain second, it flipped to full thrust reverse and then I crashed it as a result. It wasn't a big deal. I got the thing back. It wasn't a big deal. You can watch the video if you wanna see it. That's a 64 millimeter F-15 from FMS. That being said, I still wanna set up pilot fatigue so I can show you how to do it, but I've had better luck, full disclosure, on the EV and ESC for pilot fatigue. So if we have problems, I'm gonna have controllable thrust reverse, and then I'm gonna have full pilot fatigue. Now, what does pilot fatigue do? Pilot fatigue, my, thrust, my throttle cut is on, would be like that without moving that stick, yep. okay? That is very hard to do when your brain has been trained to cut throttle on landing or crashes. Now, if you're a drone pilot, you may not have that same problem, but when you're a regular you know, fixed wing pilot, you're used to cutting the throttle back to nothing for landings. Um, and then, you know, at some point you might do a thrust reverse. You know, some people have set this button to the pilot fatigue where they'll press and hold the I button and it'll do thrust reverse at full throttle, but only when they're depressing the button. When they let go, it just goes back to regular thrust, okay? Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind, there may be some wear and tear on the motor and ESC and combination therein when you do thrust reverse. So just be aware of that, okay? So I just want you guys to know, it's your responsibility to keep your plane from crashing and damaging it. This is just my suggestion. And do we need to make our disclaimer that we usually, we only do pilot fatigue on EDF jets? We only do pilot on fatigue planes. on EDFs because you can't easily stick any appenditures in here and get it cut off. You shouldn't. But if you have a prop plane and you set up thrust reverse with pilot fatigue, you're asking to hurt yourself or somebody that's walking around. Okay, so yeah. please don't do that. Just do controllable thrust reverse on prop, especially tractor prop driven planes. Because if you have a prop up front that goes to full reverse 
and you're not expecting it, it could cut you up bad and it could roll backward and hurt somebody else. So just please use your best judgment. Anyway, that's the disclaimer. All right, getting back to the point, nanny state over. All right, so clicking, I'm gonna go down to mixing. Where's mixing? There it is. So I'm gonna go mixing, I'm gonna go to a new mix. I've got my switches in the normal condition, throttle cut is on normal. And I wanna basically make throttle, mm, I wanna make throttle impact throttle. No, I don't want throttle impact throttle. What do I usually do? G. I think I do G. And this is throttle cut is on by the way. So switch G, the condition of switch G is gonna set to throttle. That's gonna give us our offset. And I only want that to operate with switch G, switch G, and I only want it to operate in this position, but not in this position and not in this position. That's our pilot fatigue, okay? So in this position, then I'm gonna make the rate something. So now this is where I can hold my plane and test my theory, okay? So throttle cut is off. I don't care about the one minute. You can see right here, there is no rate attached to it yet. See, now it's gonna start running, and this is definitely thrust reverse. Now I'm scrolling it in. Okay, now I can also make more by doing that. Okay? That is super that is easy really on the loud. ears. Okay, so throttle cuts off, okay? So I'm just gonna, my stick is all the way down. I just wanna demonstrate how this works. Now there's no mix, okay? So I'm gonna walk out. I'm in normal flight. Throttle cuts off. I've got forward thrust. Everybody's having a good old time. I'm coming in the land. Okay, you hear the beep? Yep. So this is controllable thrust reverse. So you can taxi. Okay, throttle cuts on. Now, cleared the timer. Everybody's speakers are blown, <laughs> as usual. I'm gonna go back down and just show you this. Throttle cut is on, and we're gonna go back into mixing, so you could just copy the setting if you wanna copy it. So we set it to G, to throttle. That means that this switch controls the position of throttle. So you'll notice that throttle cut is on. There is no mix, there is no mix. Now there's a mix, and it's a huge one. Okay, otherwise there's nothing, right? Make sense? So in this condition, in this condition only, we have it blacked out. That means it's gonna do minus 100 and plus 100, okay? Now those values, I admit, are just confusing and foreign to me. I have never connected the dots on, you know, you've got the minus and the plus, and then you've got the minus and the plus. That's for like a two position thing like ailerons, okay? But then you also have the offset, which is like, where's the starting point? Do you wanna start from zero? Do you wanna start from minus 100? Do you wanna start from plus 100? Okay, now keep in mind, the absolute positions are also subject to, in your servo setup, okay? So one more thing. In your servo setup, you can also change that value. Okay, so in our case, the G switch is controlling this. Okay, throttle cut is on. Which one is it? Oh, it's gear. gear. So in order to play with that, you can change those values too, okay? And that would allow you to set your throttle to over 100% or under, uh, the over 100%, you go up to 150, you go down to 150. Now, don't get excited. That doesn't mean you're gonna get any more speed out of your, your ESC, because your ESC is typically going to be calibrated to be maxed out at full throttle at 100% or you know, from minus 100 to plus 100, in this case, on a spectrum transmitter. Okay, we speak in terms of, this is minus 100, throttle cuts on. This is zero, this is plus 100. So you have a 200% swing nominally. If you set it to 150, then you would have a 300% swing. That doesn't mean that there's more speed gonna come out of this thing, okay? I just wanna point that out, because I know some of you guys are thinking, well, I can make it fly backward. No, you can't. 
And if you do, I want to watch that video. So please send me a link. And hey, YouTube will block you it. You still needed that. Oh, we have to mark the center of gravity, don't we? I mean, you don't have to, but you probably should. The center of gravity is important on all planes. Now that we set everything else up, let's <laughs> go ahead and set do. that up. Man, this is a pretty nice instruction manual. It almost tells you everything we told you in the video. Yep, right there. Okay, so it's 85 to 95 millimeters back. That's Goodness what it, gracious. That's what it says. That's way back there. Well. So guys, I wish it wasn't so stinking windy out because I would go fly this right horrible. this second. 85 to 95. Okay. Now, truth is, jets would probably fly fine in the wind, but I want to see it fly it's good. It's really windy, It's though. really windy. That it's windsock like, is like bending the pole over. Yeah. Okay, so 85 to 95. Okay, so that's... 85 there we go okay so 85 from here and i usually like to line up wherever i need it to be and you can actually line up that too because those are the same dimensions believe it or not hmm, that's too far out i don't like that okay so there's that Okay, so there's 85 and then 95. Mm -hmm. So uh, also guys, if you wanna help support us, if I haven't mentioned this six times already in the video, I just want you to know the best way to support us is to buy these airplanes from the links in the video description below. It really does help us to make a splash with the affiliates that we work with. What the heck? That's 95 millimeters. Did I like not do this very good? I feel like that's so far different. Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's about right. That's pretty cool. Okay, now if in doubt, you can go to 10 because that's a 10 millimeter gap. And you can go 10, good enough, 10, good enough. The other thing you can do is you can find, you know, like the edge if you want to square to the edge once you get one that's done. You can measure a more easy way like that. So let's say it's 70 there. Then you can figure out and see. I kind of marked that funny. I feel like I want to try again. So 85, this is unusual. I don't usually make this mistake, but I'm just trying to save myself some trouble. Yeah, I feel like I didn't do a very good job of marking that one. I'm gonna just make a little bump and see if I can get to 70 now. So if I'm 70 when this comes out, then that means, yeah, I did mark that terrible. Hmm. Guys, my apologies. Uh, and then 10. So I'm gonna just go 10. Sometimes if you don't think it's right, you just gotta bite the bullet and make it right. And I didn't make it right. So I'm gonna make it right. It would help if these manufacturers would give us a more obvious measurement point. Uh, because when you have a swept wing design, you can't always mark right there. And I usually try to mark where it's easy to see. And then that gives me the capability of doing one other thing that's really handy. So when I go to check the center of gravity, throttle cut is on. With gear on, in my case, keep in mind, 2200 4S. Now I can put my fingers on the bump. This is the front hole and it's tail heavy. And this is the back hole and it's nose heavy. So I like the way that that is. That's plenty good for what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the lid and I'm just gonna mark on here 2200 uh, milliamp hour 4S. Okay, and I'm gonna have the wires going that way and there's a start and stop of the battery. So that tells me roughly where I need it to get in the ballpark. Now there's gonna be some days where you wanna be a little bit more tail heavy and some days you wanna be a little bit more nose heavy. Usually that's largely depending on if you wanna come in and have a flared landing and you wanna try to do that into the wind or if you wanna fly, you know, say you're flying um, a sailplane like this Fox, two point, is that a 2.3 meter? 2.3 mm -hmm. meter. And you, you wanna just be able to really feel the slightest movement from a thermal. And you're flying with your AS3X and safe off or your reflex off. Then you can go in there and you can make that thing tail heavy and it will just be super pitch sensitive. And as soon as you hit a thermal, you'll see it respond. But on a jet, I don't really see why you'd wanna be so crazy tail heavy, but sometimes you wanna be a little bit more nose heavy if you're a newer pilot because the plane is gonna to tend to fly more stable, okay? But you're also gonna get less responsive elevator. And so my suggestion is if you really wanna have a more stable flying plane without impacting the center of gravity, I would suggest setting your rates 
a little bit lower and your expo a little bit higher. So if, if I start at 10 and five is the half point and 20 is the double point, I would start at 20 and then make it 10 and 40, okay? Then you're gonna have a larger range and you can start a little bit more stable feeling. Now, that being said, a balanced plane is going to perform better than a plane that's got more expo, period. But it's easier for you as a beginner to emulate that setup, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, hopefully we've answered all your questions. I can finally rid my life of this manual and go put it in my file cabinet and get this thing in the air. I cannot <laughs> wait. This thing looks amazing. Can't believe I marked those center of gravity holes wrong. That was so well, dumb. At least you didn't mark it till. At least I didn't crash the plane because I had it wrong. At least but you didn't. I have to try one thing. I have to uh -oh. try one thing. I have to see if this thing will float. I don't know if it will. If it does, that's awesome. I kind of guess it won't. Ooh, so close. It's not quite there. The power to weight ratio is like really, really, really close. Let's say it's like 95%. So that is awesome. And I gotta say guys, this Futura, if it flies half as good as its big brother, the 80, then it's gonna be an amazing experience. And I know you guys wanna help support Brian Phillips RC, so we're just gonna regurgitate these yet again for like the fourth time in this video. Obviously we've gone through setting up the radio system, getting all the wires plugged, getting the cable management done. We've gone through installation physical. We've gone through repairs of a broken wing or a damaged wing from shipping. We've gone through touching up with nail polish. That's super important stuff that every man needs to know because obviously it's important. We've also gone through setting that same said nail polish, which is super handy. But then we've gone through safe setup, AS3X setup, thrust reverse, and pilot fatigue settings, all these things so that you don't have to re refer back to a, a manual because who wants to do that? But at the end of the day, we want to help you guys get where you want to go. And that is in the air with an amazing Futura. And so the easiest way to get there is to smash the like button on the way to Brian Phillips RC to check for coupon codes and then find this beautiful plane on our website there by type or by manufacturer or even easier. You can just scroll down and look at the video description below. At the very top of the list, there will be a plane. And then below that will be a battery. And then below that will be a receiver. And then below that will be a transmitter. And if you need any more, just go to Brian Phillips RC. We got all sorts of stuff because we also show supplies like what we used on this repair to repair that vicious wound that we got from the factory. And then also sometimes the vicious wound is not from the factory and it's instead from a tree that jumped out from nowhere 40 years ago when it was birthed and it was this tall. And now it's 75 feet tall and you've flown by it hundreds of thousands of times. But anyway, I'm just saying, depending on your situation, you may need to repair a plane. So we've got those supplies there for you as well. So guys, Futura from FMS, amazing plane. I can't wait to get in the air. It's killing me that I can't fly it right this second, but you guys don't have to wait any longer. All you have to do is one minute before this video published, you just go to the video and it will be there for your viewing pleasure. Or excuse me, this is one minute before the flight, right? This Yes, so the flight will already be published. Yeah, so if the flight's already in. published. You don't have to wait at all. I just have to in real life wait, which sucks. I hate waiting. But the thing is, you guys don't have to wait. It's already published right now. And if you're trying to find a particular video about a particular plane that you've seen in the background or like this F-18, there's one time you're not going to get that. And that is the gap between when this publishes and when that publishes. We usually don't do teasers like that. We don't do it on purpose, but we just kind of don't know when things are going to drop because there's sometimes limitations on when we can talk about certain new releases. And other times we're allowed to talk about them as soon as they show up on our front doorstep. This being one of those times. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're going to see this before the F-18, but I can't wait to fly that either. Just full disclosure. It's going to be amazing. So anyway, that's all you get for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for being uh, every month supporters. It's huge. It really does help us. It, it brightens our days. Every time I sit down to do the books, which is usually about once a month, and I see all those vicious expenses coming from the pawn project that's about ready to hit in my back pocket very, very, very painfully, then it makes me feel better, slightly better at least one happy meal at a time. But also for those of you that are sending us gifts and donations on PayPal, we really appreciate you. Uh, it's uh, brightens our day. And same thing with super thanks. We never expect them. And when they come in, it's like, wow, that's awesome. Thank you for caring enough to throw us a couple of bucks that way. But really also members of YouTube, thank you for being members mm -hmm. on YouTube. It's a new one. 
we're working on figuring out exactly how to administer the benefits that we want to not list. So you have to pay special taxes on those things. But the truth is at the end of the day, all of you guys that are supporting us financially are a huge part of our success here on YouTube. But really the best way to do it is to just buy one of these amazing toys. Yes, that's right. They're toys for adult men that love these things, mostly men. 25% of you are watching on your wife's account. We know how this really works. <laughs> but anyway, we, I have daughters and they do fly, hopefully in the future, someday, right? One of them, maybe. One of them, maybe. Probably not the other one. Probably not the other one. <laughs> All right, but my wife flies, so just so you know. They flew in an airplane. In an airplane, a real airplane. Oh, and that's the and other thing, guys. Really if you didn't already know, we're working on full-scale airstrip someday, but it's not quite here yet. And that's gonna come after the pond and the, the gift shop, the damn gift shop. Yep. Next to the pond, damn. All right, guys, that's all you get for today. The Futura by FMS, amazing. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. So much more to come from Brian Phillips RC.